Brazil bring with them to every World Cup a special flavor, a special sound, a special talent, and some thought this time a special team. And that seemed to be confirmed in their opening game in Turin against Sweden. Just look at Branco's pass and Careca's majestic finish. Wonderful swerve that left the Swedish goalkeeper Ravelli for dead. That was five minutes before half time. 17 minutes after it, Kareka scored again, taking the pass from Muller. A perfect pass, perfect finish. But Brazilian football often has a brittle edge to it. And so it proved when the Swedes, now playing their best football of the match, scored with 12 minutes left. Stromberg's cross from the right. Eventually it reached Brolin, he outwitted Ricardo, but Brazil conceded no more. Next Brazil faced Costa Rica in Turin. A formality surely. Manager Lazzaroni picked a curiously cautious Brazilian team and chances were few. The only goal came after 33 minutes, and it always seemed likely to come from a set piece. That corner went across the field, next came a long throw, and from it an untidy goal by Muller. But two more points for Brazil, Muller the scorer, Brazil 1-1-0. Brazil against Scotland also in Turin. A win would leave Brazil top of the group, a draw might be enough to see Scotland through. For 81 minutes, the Scots held on. Then a fierce drive by Alameo. Was only parried by Leighton. In went Kareka. Muller finished it off. Scotland were out. It was tough for Leighton. He'd kept well earlier in the game. The killer touch from Muller. But overall, Brazil once again had failed to convince. Even so, Scottish fans still found something to celebrate, though in truth, it had been a confusing World Cup for them once again. Their undoing was surely in their opening game against Costa Rica in Genoa. Scotland made chances, took none of them. Then after a fine flowing movement, four minutes into the second half, Costa Rica accomplished the unthinkable. They scored. The passing movement is worthy of a winning goal. But the X factor is a cheeky back heel by Yara. It left Kayasa with the scoring opportunity. The back heel that outwitted Scotland, the goal that made life so hard for them in Italia 90. Scotland needed to repair the damage against Sweden, also in Genoa, and they produced a fine performance to do it. Good work by Robert Fleck on the right led to a corner. And Stuart McCall was able to force the ball home from close range. That was after just 10 minutes. Roy Aitken proved an excellent captain for Scotland through all their ups and downs in this tournament. And with nine minutes left, his positive move opened up the way for a penalty. And there was little doubt about it. Ravelli saved the shot. The penalty awarded for the foul there. Now the focus moved to Mo Johnston, who now had the opportunity of making the game safe for Scotland. That was goal number two. But it wouldn't be Scotland without them seeking to make their supporters' hearts beat just a little faster. And with five minutes still remaining, Stromberg beat all comers in thought and deed to make it 2-1. But Scotland held on for two points.
clumsy play and a curious free kick gave Sweden an early chance against Costa Rica. Free kick awarded just outside the penalty area. The wall lined up. A fine save by Caneo from Swartz's free kick. But Ekstrom pounced to finish it off. After this, nothing went right for Sweden. However, they held their lead until 15 minutes from the end. Little argument about the award of a free kick there, particularly when you see it again in slow motion. So this was a chance for Costa Rica. Gonzalez took the free kick, the header by Flores and style. Sweden, it was becoming the old familiar story. And with two minutes left, Medford, on as a substitute, was able to race through the Swedish defence to enable Costa Rica to score an improbable victory and force Sweden to go home with three defeats behind them.